So the first thing we want to do is, of course, we don't want to make we don't want to actually edit this map to make it our own because it's not really our own map. We want to start fresh. So to do this, we need to go to Tools, Clear Map, and you see all the stuff: textures, heights, walls, gaps, light maps, objects, lights, uh, sounds, effects, sprites. All that must be highlighted. That way, we got everything is gone. So now we're just left with this huge yellow box, which is like, it's pretty much no textures, no lights, no nothing. It's a complete brand new map. And this is really good because now we could start with our own thing, with our own uh, custom features to our own map. So let's start off with something neat. Uh, let's start off with the Brow Edit Editor Modes. So this is what we're going to first move into. There are what I, what I usually do is I, I go from a certain list of edit modes when I start when I do when I start a map when I end a map. I highly recommend this just so it would be easier for you when you create and save your map at the end. This is what I usually do first. The first thing I do is texture edit mode. So if you go to edit mode, texture edit is already on default. So that's that's good to know. And then after I'm done all my texturing, I then proceed to object edit mode which is down here. After object edit mode, I then proceed to lights. Now don't worry about lights for now. We will actually, you know what, we'll, we'll start off with something simple for lights, just so you have a feel of, you know, you can actually play your map and not witness some like really black, spot, like it, it won't even look like a map at all. With no lights, you'll just see blackness on your map if you do upload it to your, uh, to your server. But yeah, we'll, we'll do a little bit light maps. So light maps is right after I do my object edit. And then finally, you go to gat edit. Gat edit is all the walkable areas where your players will go. I usually do that last just because it's, it takes up some time and it's not really needed to be done in the first place because you need your map to be complete before you can even do any gat edit, right? So let's start off with texture edit mode. So the texture edit mode, what is texture edit mode? This is what we're going to be using to actually decorate and make your map look like either a field, a room, a house, whatever you want or a town. So if the first thing we need to do is to actually open up our texture edit uh, window. To do this, click T. So now that we just clicked T, you could see this window that popped up called texture select. Open the directory row, it's in there, and then you can see a bunch of textures. You just drag down this bar, you can just keep going, you know, keep populating this list with all these textures. This I don't recommend you, you should play with. I do, however, recommend you take the black texture. Always have this first texture on your uh, texture inventory. I'll talk about that later. But just click, just click the texture black, just like that. And if you click T again, you'll see that you now have this black texture in your window. So it's pretty simple, right? Then I want you to click T again, and I'm going to show you some key areas that, that I use whenever I use, whenever I design uh, maps that compose of fields or or rooms or towns or anything like that. The best place to go to, what I find, is the last one. So if you go to the last one right here, it's the most heaviest in textures because there's like thousands in here, but it has it's the most beneficial when it comes to finding terrain levels. So you can see there's hills and rocks. Everything's actually organized together, so it's very easy to find stuff. As you can see, this is all organized, this is all organized. You can, I'm sure you can notice uh, where these textures are coming from in terms of the maps. As you can see here, it's from Endless Tower, more Endless Tower stuff. And if you just keep dragging down all the stuff, you can see some Morok and some Geffen and Peon. There's a lot of great stuff here. So just you could you can look through all these textures you want. Keep in mind that if you go right past the halfway point, it just starts to repeat itself again. So you don't need to go past all the way. Just go to the halfway point. I don't know why it does this, but for some reason, Browdit repeats the textures again two times. So. I don't know why. Anyways, this is your texture, one of the texture areas. There's so many more areas to go. If you click the second one, here are some more textures to refer to. I use this wood piece sometimes for rooms. I also use this for walls. I recommend the second, the second last uh, directory just for like your wall edits and stuff. Very helpful when it comes to that. I'll talk about that later. As you can see, there are some Frontera walls and a little bit, little bit of uh, sewage and stuff like that. The third one is uh, bridges and some roofs and stuff like that, but don't need to worry about that. Just worry about the last two. It's the most beneficial, I find. So let's click T again, and uh, where we know a little bit about the edit mode, but uh, you know what? Let's actually start, let's actually pick a few textures. So let's go back to T, click the edit texture mode. 
let's pick some grassy areas. I don't know, let's click the first one just so you know where I'm clicking. Uh, let's click this. So we got that, and we have some grass. Let's click this one too. This, 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 and this. Click T now. As you can see, we have all these textures now populated in our texture inventory. To actually scroll through this, just click the bracket keys. It should be right above your enter key on your keyboard, depending on if it's uh, uh, an American keyboard or whatnot. I'm not sure what the international keyboards look like, but the two bracket keys. So you can click the left one, the left one goes back to the start of the first texture you clicked, and then the right one goes away from the first to the, to the last texture that you chose. Okay, So let's pick the first texture we got here, which is the grassy one. To pick a texture, just hold left click on the first piece you see here, and then draw a red barrier. I'm not sure if you see this. Let me try and move this window in more. If you if you take a look, there's like a very uh, just barely noticeable uh, red texture grid around this uh, texture itself. Do not exceed into the purple area, or else you will crash uh, brow it when you do paste it. But yes, this is what you're supposed to do. Now, if you put your once you actually got the grid around there, a nice perimeter, just drag your mouse back onto the the texture board. It's right the maps it, itself, and you should see your texture right there. Now, there's a few things you need to know about textures. First of all, is that you need to make sure the texture is in the right dimensions when you paste it on a map, or else when you go in game, you'll find that it's going to be either too big or too small, or it might be pixelated. So you, there's actually a certain uh, size of texture you need to work with. To, to do that, you need to uh, get this into a 4x4 four four texture. So how do we actually decrease the size of this? It's very simple. Just click the minus key right beside the zero key the minus and plus key. Minus reduces, plus increases. As you can see, look how, pix look how pixelated this can get. So keep it as a 4x4. Four four. So and then, and then just left click to paste it. It's so easy. So if you zoom in, you can see your texture just like that. And if you want to, say, rotate your texture so it doesn't look like it's all the same thing, as you can see, it, it doesn't really match at all, just click spacebar. And you can see it starts rotating. So I always rotate once just so it everything's all randomized, looks more natural just so you got some textures around here. Alright, so we have our grassy area. If you want, you could also just take a tiny piece of the texture you did. Make sure you do not touch the plus or minus key when you do this, or else look what happens. Now it won't fit. Do you see the difference between this one and that one? You see the left side is more pixelated than the right. So make sure when you paste a texture, you have to make sure it's in the uh, right pixelated order. So just click like that, and now you can see both textures are actually the same pixelation, so they do match, but it's only a tiny piece. You will you will get used to this in time, trust me. Okay, so now that we have that, let's take a look at actually decorating our map with objects. So we know a little bit about texture edit, right? Because we could, if we want to scroll through here, we could actually make a road. So if we want to make a road, just do this. And if we want to make the end of a road, just highlight this. You can see we can change the direction where the road leads, just go like that and uh, just highlight this, go like that. And now if you see something here, it doesn't actually match, right? So you know how I told you about that actual uh, uh, taking tiny pieces of a texture? Here's a little scenario that you'll have to do that. So to do that, I, want, I would like you to, to do this. I want you to select, what, it's kind of like trial and error, but I want you to select this tiny piece right here, if you could see it. A mouse is going over it, hope you see it. Just select that tiny piece and then drag it right here and now the, the road should match almost there but p players won't usually see this There's, there are some tricks to do like covering objects on pieces of road that haven't really matched too quickly or too well just so people don't see it so if we go back to the leaves and stuff here we can just paste this just so the road doesn't look too bare so yeah we have a little bit of textures here but just a little bit of uh, designing so we have just the basic idea of what texture mode does. So how about decorating a map with objects? So it's pretty simple. Go to edit mode, object edit, and now you'll see this red grid. This red grid is extremely helpful when it comes to aligning your objects uh, perfectly beside each other so it doesn't look like it's out of, uh, it's, it's not aligned properly. So I'll show you about that later on. Now to open the object menu, just click M, and you'll see this, uh, this uh, object selection window pop up click row and then you can click the first one. 
there, the good thing about object, uh, object edit uh, mode and all this stuff is that the uh, the objects are uh, placed in such a way that they do belong all to the same town or same place. For example, you see all this stuff here? It all belongs to, uh, I believe this is uh, Glastium. Yeah, this is Glastium right here. We can click the third one, the fourth one. You know what, let's start with, I don't know, let's go find some trees. Here we go. Click the sixth subdirectory and let's click just a tree, any tree you want. So after you clicked an object, just press M, you will see this thing up, this window or picture pop up that you, shows you which object you uh, selected. And unfortunately, that uh, I, I'm not sure if it does have one, but from what I know is that Browdit does not have an object inventory. I could be wrong, I've always worked with single objects at once. But I'll show you what I usually do when it comes to placing an object on a map. What I usually do is I just paste an object right here, the tree, by clicking Control, hold Control, and then left click, and you'll see it spawn. If you would like to deselect the object, just right click, and you'll see it on highlight with red. If you want to select it again, just click left click on it, and it should highlight. That means you selected it. If you want to move it around, just hold the right click, sorry, left click, hold left click, and then just drag it around. Okay. And that's how you just move around objects and stuff. Now, if you would like to snap it to the grid, hold shift and then move it. And you can see it starts snapping to grid areas. So that's pretty easy. Okay, so you know how to snap objects to grids, right? And we know how to move them around, right? So how about increasing the size, decreasing the size, or just changing the position of the object itself? It's pretty simple. Just click an object, click enter, and now you'll see a little window pop up. You'll see something called position. This is the position of your x, y, and z axis. And then you'll see something called scale. This scale is what uh, is responsible responsible for the height, the width, and how uh, wide it is, or how tall it is. It's all the all all those values. If you want to double the size, just click two, two, two. For example, if, if an object was originally with a, with a size of 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and 0 0.4, to double it, you would not click 1, 1, 1. You would click 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and 0 0.8. Just double the size of every value. Make sure you click enter on each value, just like that, and then click OK. Now you notice that your tree is now twice as big. I do not recommend doing this because trees are not supposed to be that big. OK? Trees are supposed to be at the default size. Now, just a little trick that I do. If you want to uh, keep track of how big an object is compared to a person, a great way to do this is just to do this. Go to Sprite Edit. If you uh, click Sprite Edit, and then just click Control and left click, just like you do when you paste a tr an object, you'll see an NPC just or a person sprite pop up. And if you want to see how big an object is to it, just click O, and now you can see how big an object is. So if that matches, then that should be the right size. Let's go back to Object Edit. OK, so we can see how big a sprite is to an object, and that's really good and really helpful when it comes to understanding how big a map is to a person and just getting a feel of that. It's a great reference that I use. OK, so uh, how about an object's direction of, of or how it's shaped? Well, a tree wouldn't really help just because it, it, it I'll, I'll show you an example with something else. Let's say we want to click, uh, let's go back, click M, let's click this one right here, flower bed, right? I'm sure you've seen this many times in Frontier Fields. So let's just click that, click enter, and now the rotation. If you want to change the rotation, just click uh, right here in the center piece, that would, that's what uh, changes the direction. So we want to click 90 degrees, it just changed 90 degrees. We want to change it by 45 degrees, just change it by 45 degrees. I recommend that, well, I hope you understand the, the triangle as, uh, angles of a, of a circle.